Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be working on my Lord of the Rings elf costume. Now in previous videos I started a costume, I was going to do a Rivendell guard from the Hobbit movies. Now I'm just changing tack a little, I'm going to be doing an elf from the Lord of the Rings and that's going to be from the prologue in the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, I just love those guys, they have those awesome massive glaives, uh, but the armor is just fantastic. It's practically the same as the one they use in the Hobbit, but the Hobbit one is more detailed. I just decided that I wanted to change, so luckily I'm not too far down with the project that it's not impossible. So today I'm going to be repainting this guy. Now this is a helmet made by a company called Wicked Replicas I believe and uh, they were making them a few years ago. I'm not sure if they still do um, but if I can find a link I'll leave it below. Uh, this is obviously the Hobbit version. It's this lovely silver and copper colour um, but we've got to make it more like the Lord of the Rings one which is more like a brassy gold with green undertones um, I believe. The way they describe it is sort of spring colours whereas this is more like autumny colours. This is a great starting point. It's, the sculpt is great. It really wasn't that expensive. Uh, the shipping was quite expensive, but um, I think it came from Australia. But the other thing we've got to do is there's some um, seam lines just here, which kind of go all the way around. So I'm just going to tidy those up. It shouldn't be too hard. And then we're going to get to painting. So let's go. So here we are on the bench. First things first, this seam line. This guy right here, we're gonna try and get rid of him. First, I'm just gonna try uh, just a, a hobby knife and exacto. Um, just to see if we can take that off. This is very this is a very flexible helmet, it's great to wear. Um, but I should be able to just trim this away. So let's give it a go. I'm gonna get a new blade, which is what I should have done in the first place. So there we go, that's all the seams cleaned up. The knife worked really well, and then I've just gone over it with some 400 grit. Uh, I think it will cover much better with the paint too. I went all the way around this comb here, and all the way down the back as well, just to help try and blend that in. It's also much sort of smoother now. There was a little bit of a rough ridge before, um, but that's all now blended, and now we can get to painting. Now this helmet is made of a vinyl or some type of polyurethane. It is very flexible and not a lot actually sticks to it. I think you can get some vinyl primers and things like that, but we're not going to do anything fancy. The best thing to do with these type of flexible helmets is just straight up acrylic paint. So this is going to be my undercoat. It's a, it's a lovely sort of um, earthy green color. Um, this might be a bit thick. It is artist quality, so the pigment should be good. But um, I've got some extender just to thin it out if we need to thin out the paint. But I'm expecting it to take a couple of coats to get good coverage in green on this. And then we can get to moving on to some of the uh, gold colors. So the acrylic paint absolutely did not work for me. This really did not stick to this helmet and I ended up actually taking it all off again. It was painstaking, it was heartbreaking, but I had to sit and pick all of that paint back off of here. Now, what this is, you might notice that it is green now, is this. Now this is a leather paint and it's meant for leather and flexible things. It said on the website that it would be good for synthetic things as well, like this. So I thought I'd give it a try and this has stuck very well. It, this color is olive, that's the brand. But this has stuck to this helmet very well and I'm very happy and now I'm very pleased to go ahead with adding the gold colors. The first one is this one, it's a bronze and that's gonna go on first. I'm just gonna dry brush and see how it looks. Okay, we're gonna start on the back just in case this goes awry. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Happy that it's going kind of subtly and I can build that up very slowly. I'm actually using a sponge brush. I found this is much better for getting sort of an even coverage and I'm just going over everything very sort of lightly but also kind of heavier in some places. We're just getting sort of another layer of color on there and we'll be going back and forth between the green and the metallics just to start to bring it all out. 
I chose the Cryola colours because they are quite thick and I thought I might have to thin them. But I chose them because they're an artist's quality pigment, which means it's going to have really good, strong colour. It's not going to be sort of a watery colour, it's just going to be nice and solid. And from what I can see so far, that is very true. It's going on rather well. Look at that. So there's that bronze colour, it's been sort of mottled on, you can see the green kind of coming through. That's good, the shine, as you can see, is also pretty good. Um, it's a bit orange for my liking at the moment, but of course we're going to go in and do some layers. My next step, I think, is I'm going to do a wash of this green that we failed to use before, but the acrylic is actually sticking really, really well to this paint layer. Um, it does not scratch off at all, which is fantastic. That's only been drying for about well, five, 10 minutes, which is great. So let's just go in and add some more layers on there. This is actually working fantastically. I'm really loving this color. Just adding a layer of green over the top really takes that orangeness out. I don't know if you can see there compared to there. It's really muting down this. You can see it there, look, up here. It's really kind of coppery and here a lot more muted. It's so good. So now I've got everything covered. We did the green layer, then I did that bronzy layer. Now I've done another green layer again, which is more mottled, which has given a lovely effect. But now I just want to go in and highlight some of the gold. I've already tried it up here. What I want to do is pick out all these vines, uh, much like this here. Just makes it a bit more clear. I've mixed up a lovely warm kind of gold. This guy right here. And I'm just going to do a couple of coats on these and highlight a few sections. I'm being fairly careful, but not too precious. There we are. This took a little while to do, but I'm really happy. I've not gone on highlighted some of these surfaces yet, but I've highlighted all those vines. So there's the before. As you can see, kind of boring. And after. Yeah. All right. Now for this side. So now everything's fully detailed. I'm really happy. What I'm doing now is just, I just want to even out this, uh, this green texture. So it's a bit rough and not great. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of scrubbing the gold over the top and the paint is very thin, uh, but it's just giving the best effect. I really dig it. I'm going to sort of play with how intense that is all the way over, but that's going really well. Just like so. Just like that. And we can start evening this thing out. I'm now many, many layers of paint into this helmet. This is probably about four or five layers. The latest one was just a really nice light yellowy green, which has been washed over the whole thing. You can kind of see it there, mainly on the top to give some highlight, but now it's time to add the last bit of gold. And for that, I'm gonna be using this, which is a metallic wax paste in sovereign gold. It's a nice warm gold, not too yellow. And uh, this will give a nice metallic shine. I've just done a test down here you can see that and that's really nice and warm i'm also going to be using it very lightly on the surface just to give a top coat of that gold shine yeah Thank you. 
You see that great tone that it's giving. And it's so shiny too. It really sells. So there we go guys, that is the elf helmet for my elf costume. Uh, this was a really fun thing to do, I, I didn't know how it was going to go, I didn't know uh, how it would take the paint when we first started. Um, definitely prime it with a, a vinyl primer if you're going to do something similar. And then you know lots of different layers, you can see the layers have really built up this really lovely tone and um, it's just something you can't get by doing just one or two coats, you got to build it up. I will say if you're going to use the gold finger or a metallic wax, do that at the end because you won't be able to paint over it very easily with acrylic paints once again. You could probably do oils over it I would think but no definitely it's definitely an end process for that. I am thinking of a way to seal this too I haven't done it yet I'm thinking probably a varnish like a satin varnish would look really nice and that should just help seal in that paint job and prevent it from getting damaged. I hope you liked this video if you did please remember to like and subscribe and of course I will see you in the next video and until then take care bye bye.